Hello and welcome. Pastor John here. We're just going to be looking today at the doctrine of the Bible, the teaching of the Bible. That is God's Word. And I have a Bible verse, two verses here I want to read to you. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God bless reading this word. Joshua 1, 8-9 from the NLT. So, when you hear the word Bible, what comes to your mind? How do you react? What do you think? What is the very first thought that comes to your mind? Is it positive? Is it negative? Right? So often some responses <coughs> that we um, can consider our um, questions really, is the Bible true? Is it reliable? Uh, does the Bible have contradictions in it? Is it outdated? And also, how did we get the Bible? Right? So those are some questions that we have. And also, what do we mean when we say um, the Bible is God's word? Right? So, and then what does the Bible have to do with Jesus? What is the gospel? And how does all of this apply to you? So, in the passage we just read, that was from... Um, book of Joshua in the Old Testament, we see God speaking in and through his word. And um, he tells us to, this is God's call, to read and study the Bible. But why? That's what we want to, want, want to address. So because we have God's truth that is revealed to us in it, and because God commands it. So, so two reasons why we want to read and study the Bible. Um, because it's God's truth, God's word, he's revealed it to us, and because he commands us to. <clears throat> so, um, we also understand that as we read the verse, we see that um, God is with us, right? So we're dealing with a personal God. So not some God or, you know, with a small G or somewhere out there or God's who don't care, but we have a personal God who cares about us, and He looks after us, and He reminds us to follow His commands, and He has revealed Himself. And that's what we mean when we say God's Word, right? So His His revelation to us as people. And uh, it gets even a little bit more personal, okay? So once we read and understand the Bible, we see that the Bible talks about Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ as God in the flesh, God incarnate, and um, he's revealed to us in, in person, um, later foremost, in the, especially in the New Testament. And that's what we're going to be just briefly looking at, too, of course. So what is the Bible about? It's about the good news, the gospel, of Jesus Christ, and um, uh, specifically our personal relationship with Jesus Christ um, through the Bible. So, a few of the other questions that we just looked at. Is the Bible outdated? No. So, if you think about it, some people may say, oh, we, oh the Bible is outdated. Well, not really. Um, there's probably 5 billion copies that have been sold, according to the New York Times bestseller list. If you look at the New York Times bestseller list, um, you look at the number one entry, it's, it's not the Bible, but uh, the truth is that um, it always is number one on the list, but for whatever reason, God only knows, um, it's not on the top, but it should be there, because it's the most sold uh, book um, at all times. So who knows, God only knows why they decided not to put it in number one, but it is number one, has been so uh, for... God only knows how long. So another thing is, it's interesting, just something to consider is when you go to Google, a search engine, and uh, you type in uh, how many books have been written about the Bible, 
how many books are written about the Bible. See if you can find an answer. But if you can't find an answer, um, don't spend too much time. <laughs> I couldn't find one. And it's just, um, we wonder if there actually is an answer. So better open the Bible and then read it yourself, right? Okay. So is the Bible true? Yes. There's little, if any, reason to doubt that. Um, so we say, we, we, when we look at the Bible, God himself reveals himself to us. He's, the Bible tells us, uh, God said, um, thus says the Lord, right? In, in some of the books, Genesis, Exodus, Isaiah, Jesus as Lord, we're going to look at that more, speaks, speaks himself, especially in the, mainly in the Gospels, but not only there. And um, yeah, and the apostles later, um, the apostles John and Paul confirm both the verbal inspiration and God's authority, right? So keep that in mind. Much more can be said there, here. Um, there's much more information on this in the article that's provided for you free. It's just there to look at those questions. Um, is the Bible reliable? Yes. Um, God has revealed himself once for all. Right, the Greek word for uh, Greek word apocalypsis means unveiling or disclosure. I right? guess like revealing himself, and God has revealed himself specifically through Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus Christ is the Word, right? He is not just in the Word, but he is the Word. And so we're going to also be looking at that more when we deal with teaching the doctrine of uh, Christology everything about Jesus. So does the, does the Bible have contradictions in it? No. Why not? Because the Bible is divinely inspired and we call it God breathed. That's in the second book of Timothy in the New Testament, three chapter 3, verse 16. So it's also inerrant. That means it's without error. So from the beginning to end, um, from Genesis, from the Old Testament to Revelation, uh, everything that's stated in the Bible is true and accurate, right? And so <clears throat> what we want to consider too is sometimes what is called, the, it is referred to as epigraphic evidence, is that at times as the Bible was transmitted, in other words, uh, either through oral, verbal transmission, and also uh, through its writing, the um, uh, sometimes there were people who added parts to it and left it out. However, um, what we may call, you know, scribal editions or even scribal um, parts of this epigraphic evidence, they're always offset. So, for example, if you have a, an NASB translation or NLT, there's different, is a paraphrase, right, which I just read from, um, you see there's, there's the, the parts that have been added are offset, like they have square brackets around them, right? So, that uh, points us out that most likely somebody may have added something there, but it doesn't change the fact that there's no contradiction in the Bible, right? So how did we get the Bible? Oh, that's a really, really big process. And um, just a few things um, we want to consider is, is um, the idea of Bible biblios. Is biblio refers to a book, also like a Row, and it comes from those little papyrus plants. Um, they were called Biblos. And so that's where the word Bible comes. Um, so they were what people wrote. They wrote on these long scrolls, right? In the Bible, there weren't chapters. At that time, it was one continuous ongoing text, right? Uh, in the Old Testament, Hebrew, and then in the New Testament, um, Aramaic, and um, a Greek language primarily. Right? So it's one continuous text. And so, um, yeah, we, the, the, the way uh, the Bible is composed is absolutely unique. Uh, was written over a period or put together over 16, 1,500, 1,600 years for 50, 40 different authors. Um, there was, oh gosh, there's so many, right? Matthew, the tax collector, um, the poets, uh, Luke, the Gentile physician. Um, then there was a rabbi, also Paul, after he had become Paul, previously Saul. And so 
people wrote from um, many different countries and locations, and um, it's not a it's not a collection of writings, really. It's 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 different languages, and it's still unified in one whole. So um, the doctrine, as we said, the teaching of the Bible is called bibliology. So uh, there's a lot more about that, how the Bible was put together, and it's really, really astonishing. Um, there's so many little bits and pieces and parts of fragments, uh, especially for the New Testament, thousands and thousands of pieces spread all over the Mediterranean area, and then they were put together and that's what we have put together as the as the Bible. And that is really more, um, I encourage you to read more about it in the article. All right. So in this, in the other questions is, um, well, what does the Bible have to do with Jesus? Everything. So uh, through Jesus, he not only confirms that God's word is authoritative, it's clear and necessary and also sufficient but it is Jesus himself um, who points us to the fact that we need the Bible. We have to be in the Bible to know and understand the gospel. In other words, his saving work and atonement on the cross. So um, we need that to, be, uh, to help us be uh, spiritually well, the Holy Spirit working in and through us, and uh, to fear God and follow his will. Um, that's sometimes called the necessity of scripture. So Jesus also reveals to us, um, you know, that his ministry is in, entirely inspired. He quotes scripture, like the Old Testament, uh, because the New Testament had been written at the time over and over and over again. Every single word is, um, is true, it's accurate. And uh, we can see in the Bible, um, Jesus's I am statements and... Uh, uh, especially John fourteen six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. And then in fifteen five, apart from me, you can do nothing. So uh, we have absolute truth there, as it is then confirmed through Jesus' death and resurrection, that every word Jesus speaks is true. And it's in the Bible where we have that, the good news. Is that neat? I think that's pretty awesome. So it's... The Bible has everything that we need to know. This is this is a big one um, for us to know God's will, right? Because God wants us to uh, follow His will, and um, so after Jesus um, had risen, re was resurrected from the dead, uh, you go in chapter Luke chapter twenty four thirteen thirty four. 13 to 34, you, uh, Jesus does his first, like the first Bible study, if you want to call it, on the road to Amos with two of the disciples uh, and uh, encourages them and uh, explains to them how all of the Bible, the Old Testament, uh, points to him, to, to Jesus, right? So good, important is too also that nothing must be taken away, added or subtracted from the Bible, right? And we don't want to do that if we, yes, we fear God and follow Jesus. So we're not going to add any words or take anything away. And so we um, see how all of this testimony uh, interlocks, right? It, 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 it affirms the divine inspiration of the Bible, right? So it is the Holy Spirit who guided the people, um, the authors of the 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New, to record God's word, um, you know, exactly the way God wanted it to be, right? That's a big one. So they were led by the Holy Spirit, and that's what we mean by divine inspiration of the Bible. And so since it is God who uh, made it so, um, the Bible doesn't have any contradictions, errors, um, Right. Otherwise, it wouldn't be uh, a perfect God we're dealing with. And um, as I said, even though there may be some scribal um, additions or even some, you know, errors, they're offset and um, it's, it's pretty much sorted out. But read the article. Uh, take a look more about that. So it's about it's about Jesus. Right. So that's what we want to understand. So. Yeah, what is the gospel, right? This is the most important part. Um, the gospel is the message and promise of salvation freely available to every believer in Jesus Christ. I repeat, 
this is this is the most important part the gospel is God's, God's message and promise of salvation that is freely available to every believer in Jesus Christ and that is the most important thing to understand because it is only in and through the Bible that um, we have the gospel, the good news that we can have um, eternal life in and through uh, faith in Jesus Christ. And that's the good news. The word gospel comes from the Greek evangelion. And then in English, we just say, you know, we just call it good news. The greatest news possible, but well, we'll just be modest and just call it the good news. And um, so that way we can have faith and hope that um, after we die, like there's hope in the resurrection because um, Jesus promises us to, to be with us, even now, as we're still here, and uh, working in and through us, um, uh, through the Holy Spirit. And we'll look, uh, we'll look at all of these things in a bit more detail and depth in separate parts, um, the work of the Holy Spirit, and to understand who He is and uh, how He works. And, uh, yeah, so the the word gospel, if we have it capitalized, gospel refers then specifically to the four gospels, um, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And um, Matthew and John were uh, two of Jesus' disciples. They were first-hand eyewitnesses. And uh, Luke and uh, Luke and John Mark, who wrote the Gospel of Mark, they they were um, they were not there. But when you look at what they had written, uh, it's amazing how it all lines up, right? It all has to. It's cohesive and it fits together like puzzle pieces, right? So there's some parts where there's some. We can sometimes when you read it, oh, there's something missing there or something. But that's just sometimes the way God wants us to be, and He doesn't reveal everything to us. But he reveals everything that we need to know, and that is first and foremost um, about our Lord Jesus Christ. So you, know, you can ask, um, so how does all this apply to, to, to me, to you, to me? Why should I care? Because God cares. God cares, and then we have the gospel, as we just said, reveals God's grand and his plan and purpose for the salvation of, of, of humankind, right? So that's the Bible's um, big main story. And um, if you look at the article, you'll see more about the um, how it all fits together, the creation account, then there's the fall of mankind, and then redemption, and then consummation is when what we, we call eschatology, the end times, the, the, the coming of the new heavens and the new earth, when Jesus returns the second time, we'll look at all that in more detail. Um, so um, uh, that's all recorded in there, and look at you can already read it in the in this more in the article for you. So um, take a close look of that, and um, that's what the Bible records. The Bible tells us just briefly about the um, the uh, human ancestors, right? There was a uh, the tragic event in the garden was when um, Adam, and, Adam and Eve, real people, uh, real human beings, our human ancestors, uh, rebelled against God, fell into temptation, tempted by Satan, the devil. And um, ever since we've been um, estranged and have come under God's wrath uh, due to our broken fallen sin nature. And uh, there's nothing in and by ourselves that we can do um, to make us right with God, to uh, have right standing. So that's where we um, we are. Um, Satan, sin, and evil are around at work, uh, even though Jesus defeated uh, the enemy, right? Finally at the cross. Um, we're still born sinners, you, me, everybody. Um, doesn't mean that we choose to sin, but in and by itself, as I said, there's nothing that can be redeemed from God's perspective. So we're under God's wrath by default. We're God's enemies. And so that is the problem, right? So that's where we have the, the, the belief as Christians that God has put another place, a plan into place, and that is 
uh, call, we call it redemption, the plan of redemption. So um, that's where Jesus Christ comes in because he was born, conceived by the Holy Spirit, yeah, the virgin birth. And uh, I want to take a little bit closer look at that um, in, in another section too. Um, but because he was born sinless, um, he then uh, died on our behalf, atoned for our sins, and um, uh, gives us right standing um, as, um, as his children, as we place our, say, our faith in Jesus Christ. And so that's, that's really pretty much it. Um, the, the second coming, the, um, what we also call the parousia of Jesus, is really interesting and exciting and we're going to be looking at that when we deal with the uh, doctrine the teaching of the end times or also known as last things literally like the last things so that's when everything will uh, be cons uh, consummated right the bible reveals us the last part um, the reversal of the fall jesus comes the second time and then um um, all of us, we will be eternally uh, joined with Christ and God will separate himself in his wrath from Satan. All who follow him will be um, eternally separated from God. That's in Revelation chapter 20. I encourage you to read that to yourself. And then the restoration, God will restore um, Eden as new heaven and new earth. Those are chapters 21 and 22 in Revelation the last two chapters in the book of Revelation. I encourage you, take a, take a look at that. And that's when God's eternal promise in and through Jesus will be complete for all eternity. All right, so that's a basic overview of what the Bible is about and um, why it matters, right? Because of the gospel. Um, in the video description, there's a link to an article. You can, you can, you can freely access this revisit all this um, you, you can share all this right there's no it's not copyright attached to it it's all written there for you and um, so um, I encourage you to read all of this especially about the Bible in more depth and also some pra practical applications um, how the Bible was put together the composition uh, what is a good Bible translation that's a very important one and also some ba basic and more advanced Bible study help. So with, with glossaries, so keywords you can look up. And again, all this material is public domain. It's, you can freely use it and share it. And I hope you do. So the goal is and remains to get you to open the Bible. Read it, study it, uh, ideally on a daily basis and grow in your relationship with Jesus. Um, that is why God has given us his word, uh, given us himself as God in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, and revealed himself to us all. So reread Joshua ch chapter 1, 8 to 9, as we did in the Old Testament. We started off, and that's my encouragement for you. So, it's a short prayer. So, Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for revealing yourself uh, in and through us, uh, in and through your word to us the Bible, we call this doctrine the teaching of the Bible, bibliology, but we're not so concerned about uh, important words, but we're concerned about you. And we just want to thank you for having revealed yourself to us in your word. And uh, in the Bible, we also call the Bible scripture, God's word. And we're so grateful for everything you've done for us, and uh, especially your work on the cross, dying for us, Lord Jesus. So that we may have, through um, through our faith in you, with a repentant heart, turning away from sin, we have eternal life in and through you, our Lord Jesus Christ. For that we're so grateful. And thank you. And I pray for your hand of blessing upon everybody who hears this message and uh, that, they, uh, that the Holy Spirit touches their hearts, they repent of their sins, and that they also uh, open the Bible. That's my prayer. That's our prayer. Uh, remember always the best Bible. We may remember the best Bible is an open Bible. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you and praise you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So thank you for joining. God bless you and keep you.